You're listening to Procurement 6, the weekly podcast from the team at Art of Procurement that summarizes this week in procurement in just six short segments. Hi there, I'm Helen McKenzie and today is Friday, March 22nd, 2024. Six. This week's Procurement 6 is brought to you by the 2024 Procurement Orchestration Survey. Currently open for responses, this joint effort by Art of Procurement and Oro Labs will help us better understand one of the most popular new digital approaches in procurement. The survey takes less than five minutes to complete and we'll analyse the findings so that everyone can benefit from what we learn. Go to artofprocurement.com forward slash survey to participate. Five. In this week's Art of Procurement podcast, Philip Hydeson spoke with Andrew Savage, Global Lead Procurement Excellence at MTN, about what it takes to build an award-winning procurement centre of excellence, even in some of the most challenging geographical regions in the world. One of the things that have brought Andrew's team so much success and recognition is their ability to create their own proprietary procurement technology in-house. Some procurement teams may want to do this, but might be intimidated by the scope of such a project. In the segment I've chosen for you today, Andrew explains how even smaller procurement teams can build their own successful procurement technology. Let's have a listen as Phil asked him to share more. Your experience in doing this, what kind of scale do you think you need as an organisation to, to be able to even think about creating your own technology do you have to be a big co- company or given your experience of you know you're kind of as you said 60 p- folks in your procurement organization decent size but you know not huge by any stretch of the imagination so uh, and you've been able to do that do you think you'd be able to do it if you were smaller than what you are yeah absolutely I, I yeah i don't think you need a huge team to do it i think I, even that the, the sort of the a larger team would even slow you down mm-hmm. now we have one or two people who can develop something pretty quickly um as long as they can code they understand data science there's no reason why they can't spin something out pretty quickly um obviously there's you need to have a pretty good understanding of the business and, and the use case the requirements of of the business owner um but yeah i, I don't think you need a, a large organization to to do that effectively you just need somebody who's inquisitive enough um, is explorative enough and, and uh, yeah, I, I guess has the, the right capabilities to be able yeah. to deliver it, but it certainly doesn't need a, a big team. Of course, it helps with speed, but, you know, uh, we do this with, with you know, my procurement excellence team is not huge. We have like seven people. Um, and and so you've got sort of two or three of those who, who have real core data science competencies, coding competencies, yeah. um, and, and they work extremely hard, though. Um, and And put a lot of time in and effort into to developing these but yeah as long as you've got the right people on board i think you can develop it deciding to build your own technology can be especially helpful if you operate in complex geographical environments andrew's team for example operate across africa and the middle east and this made it challenging to find off-the-shelf solutions that matched exactly what they needed while a custom solution might take a little longer to build and implement, for many teams, it's well worth the time, effort and resources. To listen to the full episode, go to artofprocurement.com forward slash podcast or search for Art of Procurement and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts or click on the link in today's show notes. Four. In the latest episode of Art of Supply, Kelly Barner takes a closer look at multinational off-price retailer TJX. Now that's the company that operates chains like TJ Maxx, Marshalls and Home Goods. TJX have recently been making the news for good reasons. They've not only dodged many of the challenges affecting operations and finances of other retailers, they're actually thriving. In this week's episode, Kelly is going to talk about how TJX operates and why they're positioned for success in an economy that has been difficult for other retailers, share what she learned about how they run their buying team, and she'll identify one of the reasons TJX's success is likely to last regardless of what happens in the economy as a whole. To hear the full episode, check out the link in today's show notes or go to artofprocurement.com forward slash the pie. This is Procurement 6 from Art of Procurement. To get notified every time an episode is published, go to artofprocurement.com slash subscribe. Three. 
In the Sourcing Hero podcast this week, we heard from Alex Ball, a career marketing and demand generation professional. Now, Alex has had the opportunity to work with procurement and has seen some ways that marketing approaches can be applied inside of companies to increase procurement's influence. Marketing requires a combination of data and storytelling to motivate people to take a desired action, whether that's making a purchase, supporting a cause or providing their email address. Alex advises that procurement can leverage a marketing-esque combination of information and storytelling to build consensus, increase influence and even control the narrative when plans go awry. Sounds like it's well worth a listen, so check out the link in today's show notes or subscribe to The Sourcing Hero wherever you get your podcasts. Two. I've just returned from Las Vegas and no, I wasn't putting all my savings on black. I was at ProcureCon in Direct West enjoying three days of insight, great practice and new ideas with fellow procurement pros. One of the things that Art of Procurement gets to do as part of our media partnership with ProcureCon is facilitate one of the networking groups. My group for the event was Team Orange and they were kind enough to share their thoughts on the ProcureCon conference when I turned on my podcasting mic on day three. Let's take a listen. All the different perspectives from all the various colleagues I've gotten to know at the conference. Yeah, ProcureCon's a great opportunity for procurement training and networking. I love coming to this conference. It's also amazing to come and learn that uh, regardless of the different industries we come in, we have similar challenges in indirect space. So it was really refreshing to hear the trends and seeing tips and tricks how we can all survive (laughs) in this space. It's my first time at ProcureCon and I love just meeting and networking with others um, and just learning a lot. Yeah, I had a great time at ProcureCon networking, and I know that these are people that I'm going to continue to lean on as I develop in my career. Had a great time at ProcureCon uh, networking, meeting with uh, peers in the industry, learning about where they are in their life cycle with procurement. Yes, so a uh, great time here too. So uh, three awesome days, networking with people, learning some best practices, knowing that I'm not alone on my problems or opportunities. Uh, which was great and uh, hope to continue to uh, uh, leverage my colleagues that I'm uh, met here. Yeah. If you'd like to find out more about ProcureCon and even meet one of the Art of Procurement team face to face, you never know, we might be there. Check out artofprocurement.com forward slash ProcureCon. One. Procurement's ability to have the desired impact is dependent on a combination of knowledge, skills, technology and relationships. Misalignment, whether real or perceived, will hold procurement and the business back from achieving their goals. The recent Economist Impact Survey on procurement showed that while 59% of mid-sized companies report that procurement insights are essential for implementing the company's strategy and vision, only 44% also believe procurement collaborates effectively with the rest of the organisation. Now, that's a concerning disconnect to be sure, and something we'll be covering in our next AOP webinar on March 27th, which is called Three Perspectives on Procurement and Risk for Mid-Sized Organisations. Joining us will be SAP's Callum Vaness and Stephanie Leroy from Cirque du Soleil Entertainment Group, and they'll be addressing this disconnection and sharing real-world strategies on how procurement can better align with the needs of the organisation and do this more collaboratively. Insights shared at the webinar will be based on the mid-size organisation findings from that Economist Impact study, which were analysed by Art of Procurement. So make sure you don't miss out by registering now. Head on over to artofprocurement.com forward slash calendar. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. If you've enjoyed this pod, help us grow and tell your peers to search for Procurement 6 wherever they get their podcasts.